Flat Earthers have a huge problem. They have to reject thousands of photos and videos of the spherical Earth taken from space. If even one of them is real, their whole Flat Earth belief system falls apart. So they have no choice but to claim that all space images are faked. They are all clearly computer generated images. So we, I mean, all we have is fake ass pictures. Fake ass, super fake ass, all these are fake. If you think this is real, uh, there's something wrong with your brain. It is a pure hoax, all of it. And NASA's blue marble is a big hunk of poo poo and it's 100% debunked. Then what you're going to see here with, you know, NASA with these fake images. Fake the pictures that they did of the Earth. How can I believe any of the Apollo programs? Well, the simple answer is I can't. Notice how there is no objective criteria that flat earthers can consistently provide to determine whether the images are fake. They just assert that it looks fake to me or you must be crazy to believe this. Some even call themselves skeptics, but this is not true skepticism. This is nothing but confirmation bias. True skeptics weigh the evidence fairly and consider its strength, quantity, and corroboration, regardless of whether it fits their preconceived conclusions. But not flat earthers. If it goes against their belief, it must be fake. Period. They also have a strange obsession with NASA, and they say that NASA cannot be trusted for a myriad of wacky conspiracy theory reasons. Do governments lie? Yes, of course they do. Do conspiracies exist? Yes. But you have to look at this possibility with evidence and reason. You have to consider all the facts involved. As of 2018, 72 different government space agencies are in existence. 14 of those have launch capabilities. Six of those have launched satellites and probes into space. And four have launched humans into space. So you have to imagine that all these countries, not just the US, are together conspiring to fool the entire world. That strains credibility, to say the least particularly when many of these countries are enemies. Think of how the former Soviet Union would have loved to have proved the United States was faking its space program, and vice versa. But that did not happen. But wait, there's more. Over 30 private non-government companies in multiple countries have built or are developing space launch vehicles. And 10 have built or are developing landers rovers, or orbiters. I don't know why these companies would spend their own money to fool us. And then there are the hundreds of private contractor companies involved in building spacecraft for NASA and for the other government space agencies that employ hundreds of thousands of people, including members of my own family and people I know personally, I might add. And despite what flat earthers claim, NASA is quite transparent about where all that tax money they receive goes. You can go to usaspending.gov to search and download details of their contracts with these companies. Just do a keyword search for NASA. I often wonder how flat earthers imagine that such a huge conspiracy involving hundreds of thousands of people over more than 70 years could have remained a secret without a single credible whistleblower, and without a shred of damning evidence of the fakery. It boggles the mind. And how could this massive hoax have been passed down through the generations of people that have worked for the space agencies or their contractors over that time? Just imagine working hard for eight years to achieve a PhD in astrophysics, and then landing your dream job at NASA only to be told on your first day of work that you're actually going to be faking it and you can't tell anybody. This idea is so laughable it wouldn't even be considered a good fiction story 
and yet that is the kind of absurdity you must accept without question and without evidence to believe it is all a hoax. When the conspiracy needs to be this huge, it is far more absurd to believe it is fake than to believe it is real. When the amount of evidence is this extensive, and the number of organizations and individuals involved are this huge, and the time span is this long, a hand-waving dismissal of the evidence and a distrust of the source is not good enough. You have to make a convincing argument to show that it is all a hoax, that all of it must be fake, every bit of it. There is extensive photographic evidence of the space program going back to the very beginning, not just of space, but of the engineers building and testing the spacecraft, spacesuits, and support systems, and of the astronauts training and testing those systems. And these photos are all available online today, along with videos and live feeds readily available for anyone to examine. Some flat earthers actually say that there's only one photo of the whole earth from space that exists. <laughs> Nothing could be more wrong. They are just believing what some other flat earther said without doing a single bit of their own research on the subject. The fact is that NASA and other space agencies actually post new images, video, time lapses, and live streams of earth from space nearly every single day. I have provided an extensive list of these sources in the description. Some flat earthers also say that NASA admitted they fake all the photographs, but this is an absurd misconstruing of what has been said. In addition to photographs of Earth from space, NASA also produces some digital composited images of Earth, such as the blue marble images, and others, which are generated from many close-up images and other digital data, and then combined and digitally enhanced to show the Earth in great detail. But NASA is very clear that these are not photographs of the Earth. As I have noted before, the famous quote from Rob Simon, It is photoshopped, but it it's, has to be, was referring only to these types of images. Flat Earthers dishonestly take that statement and others out of context and pretend he was talking about all space photographs. That is not the case. NASA is clear about which photos are composites or digital illustrations and which are true photographs. Flat Earthers assert that every single space image is faked, either through CGI, which by the way did not exist in the early days of NASA, or by photographing a painting or by some other means. But these people have failed to provide any objective criteria or technique we can use to determine if an image is fake. Some have tried and failed, like attempts to show that changing the contrast in the images reveals pixelated blocks around elements of an image that are supposed to be the result of copying and pasting. But this can easily be shown to be caused by image compression algorithms, not fakery. The vast majority of stored digital images are compressed, and these pixelated regions revealed by adjusting the images are nothing more than artifacts of the way that compression works. Others will cherry-pick some silly anomaly in a space photo or video, like supposed air bubbles, and claim this proves all of them are fake. That is absurd and will not nearly suffice. You could point out anomalies in just about any photo that is not easy to explain, but that proves nothing. You have to show how it all could have been faked, from the very first photograph of Earth taken in space in 1946 to the many that were uploaded or streamed on this very day. You have to provide a consistent way to determine it. Which leads me to the photo fakery challenge. I have picked 12 photographs that I've taken myself and I made a small alteration to just one of them using photo editing software. Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, consists of two parts. The first part is to identify which photo is faked and in what way, and more importantly, to explain the objective criteria or methodology you used to identify it. Just a guess is not good enough. And then, the second part of the challenge is to use the same objective methodology 
to prove any official space photograph is not real. My suggestion would be to use any epic discover image, which you can download in full resolution, but any space image will do, as long as you can provide a valid official source. All 12 of the challenge images are available at full resolution in JPEG format at the location linked in the description, so you can download them and analyze them any way you like. I chose images that I took myself to make sure you cannot find the original photo online anywhere else, and so I could be sure they were unaltered. They were taken with a good quality DSLR camera and stored as JPEGs originally when taken. Only one of the images is altered, and I will reveal which one in the future. The alteration is not huge, but it is not just a few pixels either. Many flat earthers claim it is easy to prove that space images are fake. If that is true, then you should have no problem finding my fakery and applying the same technique to space photographs. So here is your chance. I really don't know what will happen. I am no Photoshop expert. Maybe there is some software or technique that I'm not aware of that can easily find the fakery. We will see. Flat Earthers keep claiming they can prove the fakery, but I have yet to see anything remotely convincing. Make your claims and provide your analysis in the comments. Or, better yet, make a video, to which I will happily provide a link in a pinned comment. My plan is to wait for 6 months or 50,000 views, whichever comes first, before I reveal the correct answer. I will upload the original unaltered photo at that time for comparison. So if you post the correct answer, sorry, but I will not acknowledge it right away, because I want to give many people a chance to try. When the answer is revealed, I will then acknowledge anyone that got it right. Check my pinned comment for any updates. Getting the answer right is only half the challenge. To make your case, you need to show how that same methodology can be applied successfully to space images, and how it clearly indicates that they are fake as well. But I want to be totally honest about this. If no one can meet my challenge, I am not claiming that it absolutely proves that all space photographs are real. Evidence doesn't work that way. I realize that NASA has far more capabilities and resources than I do, so if they were faking it, they would certainly be much more convincing than I could be. The conclusion that the Earth is a sphere is a scientific claim, and the burden of proof of that claim is on the scientists, and those that accept and promote that claim. So I want to be clear that I am not shifting the burden of proof, as many proponents of all sorts of pseudoscientific claims tend to do. I am not saying, prove my evidence is fake, or it must be real. But the burden of proof for the spherical Earth has been met for centuries long before NASA or anyone else went to space. And the evidence is overwhelmingly strong. See my series, Proving the Earth is Not Flat, for many of the ways you can prove to yourself, with your own observations, that the Earth is a sphere, without space photographs. So I am not demanding that you accept the photographic evidence. Rather, my goal is to demonstrate that flat earthers reject mountains of photographic evidence without adequate justification out of nothing more than confirmation bias and incredulity, not out of fair and rational scientific analysis. And furthermore, they falsely claim that it has all already been proven false. This is not remotely true. Thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos in this Flat Earth Falsity series. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe.